and gentlemen, and welcome to the Measure Club, where there's no measure to terror and entertainment. Tonight, we will be doing Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3D, the 2013 sequel to the 1974 movie, and tonight I'm a little sick, so a lot of the talking will be done by Derek. So please give us the synopsis. Sawyer family taken out by the townspeople of Texas with a baby who survived. Then we cut to a girl named Heather who gets an unknown letter from her deceased and unknown grandmother saying that her grandmother's house is now hers. She goes to the house with some friends and they, unknown to them, Leatherface is sitting in the basement of their house. Mm. So her friends get slaughtered and we eventually find a secret of Heather's that she is somehow linked to Leatherface. Huh. Okay, on to the cast. It was directed by John Lewis Senhop, produced by Carl Mazelcon. Screenplay by Adam Marcus, Deborah Sullivan, and Christine Elms. <clears throat> Story by Stephen Susco, Adam Marcus, and Deborah Sullivan. Music by John Frizzell. <laughs> and cinematography by Anast Anastas and Michos. Locations, 224 Goodwill Road, Minden, Los Angeles, which is the gas station, Julian Street, Manfield, Los Angeles, oh wait, no, this was Louisiana, <laughs> which is Verma's house, Adams Street and Texas Street, Manfield, Louisiana, which is Town Square, 327 Washington Avenue, Mansfield, Louisiana, which is the grocery store, 1910 Market Street, Shreveport, Louisiana, which is Johnny B. Red, and on to the characters. We have Alexandra... Dad Ario as Heather Miller, also known as Edith Rose Sawyer. Dan Yeager as Leatherface. Trey Songs as Ryan. Tanya Raimondi as Nikki. Scott Eastwood as Deputy Carl Hartman. <clears throat> Sean Sipos as Daryl. Kurum Maliki as Sanch Maliki Sanchez as Kenny. Tom Berry as Sheriff Hooper. Paul Ray as May Burt Hartman. Oh, wait, Mayor Bert Harden. <laughs> there is no May in that movie. He, um, Richard Rail, who's really known for a lot of good movies, like the security guard in Halloween Part 2, the Rob Zombie trilogy. He's also in Joe Dirt. Um, what else was he in? completely forget all the movies he was in, but he was really good, and he's a really good actor. He plays Fonsworth in this movie. We have Bill Mosley as Drain Sawyer, Marilyn Burns as Verma Carlson, John Dugan as Grandfather Sawyer, 
Yes, guys, he's back. The same character, I mean, the same actor that's played Grandpa Sawyer for most of the movies. We have Gunnar Hansen back as Boss Sawyer. David Bourne as Gavin Miller. Sue Rack as Marlon Miller. And on to the Gore Score! forgot to mention that's in this. Verna Sawyer, played by Marilyn Burns. I believe you said Verna already. No, I mentioned her house. I never me Oh, wait, I did mention Verna. But I have to mention her twice because it's the original Sally. Really? Yeah. The original Leatherface and Sally is in this movie. We got the gang back together. Um, on to favorite kills. We have Kenny. It, for me, it's got to be Kenny is hooked and sawed in half like a pig. I mean, oh, and Mayor Hartman is amputated and grinded. It's grindhouse, people! The reason why I love these is they're so close to what you'd see in a slaughterhouse. And the mayor's death kind of reminded me of Saw where you'd watch the pig carcasses get sawed up. I mean, get ground up and shoved into the face of the judge in the third movie, which... Honestly, is one of my favorites from said movie. And for... Not Ryan. For Kenny, it's just... It's the first time we've actually got to see on screen a victim actually gets sawn in half and get to see the whole thing happen. Not just blood or... Only the saw going through the table? No. We actually get to see the guy get cut in half and hit the floor. And it's very reminiscent of what happened during the Friday the 13th? No, wait. Nightmare or no? I'm losing it. No. What happened in Final Destination 2, where we actually get to see the guy get cut in half, if you guys remember in our early reviews, that was one of my favorites. Because again, the guy gets trisected, or bisected if you're... No wait, trisected. Pretty sure that's the term. And here, we get to see this guy get bisected right down the middle, and we watch as his body... Hits the ground. Which also brings me back to Saul, which we did see that in the sixth movie with the guy whose torso is literally ripped apart by amino acids. No, wait, sulfuric acids. <laughs> did you just Yes, I said amino acid. Sorry, I got confused with my acids. I must be on... I must be on my acid, acids. <laughs> but these ones are so realistic in this movie, and we actually get to see it happen. That's the best part about this movie. You want to see it? They make it happen. 
even though they had to cut out a lot of the gory parts in this movie, we still got something really good. And I'll mention a lot of the better parts later, but what about you? Hands down, my favorite kill is Burt being ground up. Simply because it was one of the two most unique kills in this movie. The second one being Kenny, but I've seen the saw being used before. It was nice to see a new and final well-deserved kill in this movie. Right. And you know what? Actually, there's one more thing that Bert's death actually reminded me of. And I'm pretty sure you know what I'm thinking of. Final Destination 4, when we're watching the one girl get ground up by the escalator. And we watch, I can't remember which part of her body, just whirling around inside the gears of the escalator like, a tiny piece of meat. How does one manage to get ground up by an escalator? Uh, watch the movie. You'll find out. Huge recommendation on watching it. Alrighty. And on to the least favorite kill for me. Ryan is killed by car crash. I mean, especially with how dark the scene is. I mean, yeah, I get it's night, but... You can barely see anything. I could barely see his throat slit or half his head coming off. Like they claimed, all I could see was his face and that's it. I mean, now I'm not saying he's so black that you can't even see him in the dark. This is not a race joke. No, it is not a race joke, but it could be, so... Keep your cool, SJWs. But no. I, it was literally so dark, I could barely see anything in the scene. And I actually saw everything just fine. He had his head through the windshield. No. I saw just a piece of glass right next to his head. Or lodged into his neck, and that was it. But this is a throwaway kill, ladies and gentlemen, and you know how much I hate throwaway kills. Just to get rid of the guy, you give him that. I mean, especially considering this guy was the main character's boyfriend, he could have lasted a little longer. Yeah, I mean, let Leatherface kill him. I mean, I guess by some stupid logic. Leatherface kind of did kill him by slashing the tires and causing the car crash, but no, that's not how you kill off a main character. Take some notes, people. There are better ways to kill someone. But what about you? My least favorite kill has to be Nikki getting shot in the head by Marvin. <laughs> it was literally No, actually, I feel like we've seen that before. In what movie? Hard to remember, but I definitely know we saw something similar in Texas Chainsaw, the original. We saw, we saw, um, what was her name? We uh, saw, um, not Kirk. But the Pam, Pam, it was Pam. But no, we saw the one guy open the freezer and Pam just shoots out like one of those rubber skeletons you'd see on Halloween. Well, yeah, but she wasn't shot like this girl was. No, she just burst it out and then just got pushed back in. And after the guy gets his head, his brain bashed in. Well, what I don't like about Nikki's death is the fact that the cop had accidentally shot her. 
This could basically be a throwaway kill too, because it's not even Leatherface who kills her. That or it could be counted as police brutality. That too. All in all, it was just a boring, uncreative kill for me. My least favorite. It was surprising, but it was uncreative. Huh. Well, I'm going to burn the camera when I'm done. One day. But, on to the facts. We have a budget of $20 million. Box office of 47. Um, 47.2 million. Last film for Burns and Hanson. Before they died in 2014 and 2015. So this will be the last cameo they ever do in the Le Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie. Um, we have... Was given an NC-17 rating due to excessive gore. Aww. I would have enjoyed more gore. It's what we come for. Exactly. Fuck you, MPAA. He was... Leatherface is actually named Jedediah Sawyer in this movie, which is funny. Or Jed for short. Haven't we heard Jedediah before? Wasn't he named Tommy in some of the movies? Yes, but what I'm looking at is Jedediah is the name of the young buck to um, broken toothed child in the Hewitt family tree. So I'm starting to think maybe this one was named after him, or there could be a connection. Ooh, conspiracy theory, ladies and gentlemen. Could this Leatherface actually be the child that saved Aaron in the original movie? I mean, the reboot. Makes you wonder. <laughs> um, originally pitched as a trilogy, so there was supposed to be a third movie, well, a sequel to the, to the 2013 movie, but it never happened. Instead, we got the prequel, Leatherface, which we'll be doing next week. Um, it featured three actors... For Leatherface, which was Gunnar Hansen as, um, the, in the pictures, um, Sam McKenzie as Young Leatherface, and Dan Yeager as Leatherface for, the main Leatherface, basically. Um, it was distributed by Lionsgate. And was supposed to be distri- I think was either produced or w was switched over from Twisted Pictures, the same company that is really famous for Saw, and other movies. Um, one it was 106 degrees in Shevaport on the day of the fire stunts. So it was a really hot day for all those actors burning in that house. Um, Sheriff Hooper was named after Toby Hooper. A little obvious. Um, Dan Yeager is the tallest Leatherface at six foot six. Huh. Did, uh, Gunnar Hansen come close at a staggering six foot five? I think... Kinda, yeah. But it's funny, in a lot of the reboots or sequels... He's very short. No, the next actor to play a serial killer turns out to be the tallest. I mean, Friday the 13th, it was the 2009 actor. Um, in... Shit, what was that? Oh yeah, in Halloween it was... The guy in the Rob Zombie movies. And then... 
I think that's it. But in each of the sequels, those sequels or prequel, I mean reboots, they always found a taller character. Um, one of Trey Song's songs is played while he's playing pool, which I actually know Trey Song was an actual songwriter and performer. Um, was originally supposed to be released October 2012, but it was delayed. Um, during the carnival scene, if you look closely, we can actually see someone dressed up as the pig from Saul running out of the Carnival of Horrors attraction. And he actually goes after Leatherface of a tiny-ass chainsaw, and... Leatherface face scares the shit out of him. Didn't even put up a fight. <laughs> um, and on to the opinions. Why don't you go first? Okay, I'll start with my checklist. Overuse of the camera flash transition, which we've seen in the original movie, um, the click, as I like to describe it, it's my own personal way, um, it kind of doesn't really have an actual description, but that what scene, um, it's just way overused, I mean, I started going blind. At that one scene, um, believe it's Wally's attacking his cousin in the basement, um, it just gets to be too much. Did you notice that? No, I did not. I mean, when I was watching it, it was like, I had my glasses on, and it's just like, click, click, flash, click, click. Like, they did the same thing five times in a row, and it just started to become too much. I mean, way too excessive. I know these movies are known for that. You talking about in the beginning when they were taking pictures? No, I think it was close to the middle. There was a moment when they overused the flash. Well, I never noticed that. Huh, I guess it's hard to notice when you're not in the dark watching it. Um, really good use of the fear, uh, the fear zoom, as I like to call it. Um, right when, uh, fuck, what's her name? Heather sees Leatherface for the first time, it's just like, she has this terrified face, and it's just like, it zooms right in, and she's like, it just, you can feel the scene just hit her, and it's like, oh shit, I think I better run. Just, you, and you see it in a lot of horror movies, the impact on the character displayed through the camera motions, and... They actually used it really well in this movie. <laughs> Didn't we get a lot of close-ups in a lot of old movies? We did, but... You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, Where, like... I know what you're talking about. The character, the main villain appears, and then it just zooms into our main character. As soon as she... Like... I believe people would also call it an oh shit moment. It was definitely an oh shit moment. <laughs> um, I wish the police officer was killed by the chainsaw when it was thrown at his head during the chainsaw, s the carnival scene. Um, but he was trained to dodge it. <laughs> nah, I think it was just a bit, bit of too 
much fucking luck. And, I mean, I guess they kind of needed the character to move the plot along because, turns out we learn he's the mayor's son. So he's got a bias for you. Yeah, seems like a bit of corruption in that town. Despite the black sheriff, who I actually... Who was actually one of my favorites. Um, love the second mask Leatherface wears, but honestly, the first one looked terrible, if you notice. We get the original one that we see him running around the house with, going after the guys, and then you end up seeing, as he's sewing his face, I believe it's actually the mask I'm wearing right now. It looks really good as we get a look of it. And actually, I noticed, and it's not really that hard to notice, Little Face had kind of a gray beard on him. Well, his actor was pretty old. I don't think Dan Yeager was that old. Uh, but it makes you wonder. How old was Leatherface in this movie? I mean, no one ever really researched his age. Well, think about it. When did the beginning of the movie take place? Um, that was at least... 1974? Maybe the 60s, at least? So, maybe he was... Did leave off how many years into the future? I think he was maybe in his 50s in this movie. And he probably had a cousin in her early 20s. Well, he could have also been... Well, if you remember, he was kind of... It looked like he was in his 20s in the original movie, plus also the beginning of this movie. I mean, he's this big, hulking guy. And actually, we learn in Leatherface that he's kind of 12, I believe. In his mindset, anyways. Uh, funny. Um, but just the look of the original mask in this movie, it's just, I guess it might have rotted with age, but it kind of looked like shit. The new one he puts on and sews on his face, really great look. I'd honestly almost say it was his best mask in this movie. But again, I'll get... We don't, we don't talk about the mask in the next generation. Yeah, that was shit. Um, I love the shot of Leatherface's chainsaw collection and the scene of him getting ready to go after his cousin. Just, there's this big old cupboard of, like, ten to... Fifteen large-ass chainsaws, and he... My precious. Oh, God. Don't bring Gollum into this. But he grabs it off the shelf, and it's like, oh, shit is getting real. He grabs his tie, he strands his apron, sews his mask on, and bitch, I'm ready to get ya. A very pivotal... What? At least we, dis we at least discover that Leatherface does have a heart. In fashion. <laughs> and with family. Actually, this was before he knew his cousin... She was his cousin. I know. But at least we did get an actual... Um... Bitch, I'm coming to get you scene like that. I mean, you rarely see that in a horror movie. I mean, we didn't have it with Michael Myers at all. Um, I don't remember ever seeing it with Jason. Nothing with Scrooge. It's just like it's one of those scenes that peers into the killer's life and... It's a really good shot of his underground lair. I mean, every other movie, we... If anyone else noticed, and I'm pretty sure a lot of you have, you really only see a dark, 
leaky basement with a lot of water on the ground and you don't really see much detail here. We actually get to see his room, how he's been living, and again, his big old collection and all the mannequin heads he has for the masks he makes. But, to be clear, I actually really like this movie. I mean, a lot of people hate it because it was supposed to be... It's literally called Texas Chainsaw 3D. So it was a 3D movie, but... I mean, I get everyone hates 3D movies these days. It looks cheap, it looks crappy. No one likes the glasses, but... When you're watching it on a normal TV... It's actually really well seen. I mean, yeah, there were a lot of really dark scenes where you could barely see a lot, see much, and there was poor lighting. Like in the scene where Leatherface goes after Marvin. But other than that, it was a really good movie. What about you? And I'd say at least a 9.5. What about you? Uh, I mean, it was definitely one of the better movies. But it got way too deep with the story. Like, in the first few originals, I liked it better when we knew more of a... How Leatherface was more of a mystery. Rather than get his full life story. So I think the story went a little too deep with him and his family. And that just kind of... It, it was a great movie overall, but the story, I just didn't find it very appealing. So I'd have to give this movie at least 8.5. Is that all you didn't like? Is there... Like, could well, you... There were, there were a couple boring kills, too, and... I didn't like some of the characters, like Nikki. I thought she was a total slut. I mean, and, yeah, that basically was her character. Yeah, it was I, her character I, arc in this movie. I really didn't like that character, though. And, uh, Bert, I thought he was just a self centered twit of a mayor. I mean, yeah, he just kept on going after the Sawyers and... Well, he did need some bait for his Sawyer trap, and he wanted to completely get rid of the whole family, making sure no other redneck, hick, hillbilly retards come out of it. I also didn't like how they killed off Ryan. Like, come on, he was the, he was Heather's boyfriend for crying out loud. You couldn't let him stay alive just a little longer, or at least give him a meaningful death? Huh. <laughs> I mean, there were good qualities, like, the other characters, like the officer and the, uh, lawyer for Heather. And it did have quite a few kills in here, almost three times more than it did in some of the other movies. And you actually mentioned you had a hard time counting the Sawyer family deaths. Yes, you had to count that for me. I actually did. It's He claimed it was a little too fast for him when everyone else can count that there's at least eight Sawyer families. Counting also the mother who actually turns out to die later on from a kick to the head. But... Well, well, they were just shooting left and right. I couldn't tell who was dying from what. Because some of them were getting shot and burned at the same time. And I couldn't tell who was getting burned at one point. I'm kind of glad we at least got that funny scene of... Grandpa Sawyer just taking the bullet and flying back like a rag doll. <laughs> it reminds me of Chucky. Yeah, kinda. <laughs> um. So I guess that's it. Yeah, I, 
I sit at my rating at 8.5. I just don't like how deep they went with the story. I'd much rather prefer Leatherface as a mystery. Yeah, that's a problem with a lot of movies these days. We got the big story of Halloween, which actually didn't go real well in the reboot. A lot of people hated that. Um, a lot of people, including me, hate the whole curse idea going into his past. Uh, that's why Jason's still the OG on this channel, because... He's still a very big mystery. I mean, yeah, there's a bulk about him, but you barely know much about his life other than his father was a dick and his mother was overprotective. That's how a slasher should be. That's what makes a good slasher film. You gotta have the mystery of the killer, and you gotta keep it a mystery so everyone gets intrigued by why the killer does what he does. I kind of understand the director's direction because they couldn't really find... I mean, they didn't want to create more sequels like The Next Generation or the second movie where they would have honestly made the movie worse. So the only other direction they could see this movie going right now is a sequel to the first movie fleshing out um, Leatherface or Jedediah Sawyer or Hewitt Sawyer Hewitt or Baba, whatever you want to call him his backstory which is another reason why we get the next movie instead of a sequel to this one so many movies. <laughs> this thing is, this franchise is worse than Child's Play. So, yeah, guys, that's the end of our review. We'll see you guys next week with Leatherface, the 2017 prequel to the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 74 movie. Um, after that, we'll be going back to the Child's Play series with Bride of Chucky, a lot of people's favorites, which got them into the franchise. So, next week is going to be a huge goodbye to Leatherface. Um, we will be... Honestly, I was a bit skeptical about doing this tonight. I was real. I'm... I feel like shit, especially after going to college, and it's the weather, it's the snow outside, and, but just know, I'd even risk my health to bring me, bring you these videos, and the old videos from Christmas time, and the child, the original Child's Play videos we do are being worked on by this forward because Pablo quit due to schedule problems. And actually, from the time he's been spending on those, I heard a lot of good things. Like a new intro, a bit of green screen action, um, better pictures. So yeah, I'm pretty sure the wait's going to be a bit worth a real treat. I mean... Let's just hope it doesn't turn out like the Count, Do Count Dooku update in Battlefront 2. Boom, EA. You shouldn't have screwed... You should have given us the Count Dooku ritual skin with the character. But, don't worry guys. Again, we will be back next week. Um... Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit that little notification bell at the bottom to see the, to get notifications when we post our videos. I'd also like to thank the other YouTubers who, I think one of them was named Jane, um, Jane Laurie, who's a really good singer. 
Um, and she's a really big help with giving us the subscribers, and I'd like to call out the star YouTube startup channel on, I mean, the subreddit, which is really good for those who want to get a start as a YouTuber. But, any final words, Derek? Read the instructions before you play with the product. Oh, God. I guess you're right. Or, if your grandmother tells you to read the letter before you get to the house, do it so you don't get too surprised by the killer in your basement. Good night, goodbye, and we'll see you next week, ladies and gentlemen.